We are in the neighborhood of Cerefeito, one of the top seven places to live in Porto. Let's see what this district has to offer. Hey expats and travelers alike, I'm Josh with Expats Everywhere. And I'm Kaylee. And at Expats Everywhere, our goal is to give you guys an authentic look into what it's like living the expat life so that you guys know how much it might cost, what it's like moving there, and how to integrate with your new community. We're currently doing a mini series of a breakdown of the Porto neighborhoods. We have a playlist that we already made, so you can check that in the description below. Let's go ahead and break down Cerro Feita. Now when we talk about Cerro Feita, it actually covers a large area as it's made up of several merged parishes. These are Cerro Feita, Santo Defonso, Se, Miragaya, San Nicolau Vitoria. So this area is all of these little neighborhoods. Several of these areas bleed together, so we will be highlighting more of Say when we get to another neighborhood called Baisha. But these are so close together, so it's tricky to put a definite border. The Seta Feita neighborhood is a mark of urban revitalization in the 18th century and one of the starting points for the rebirth of Baisha in the 21st century. Huda Seta Feita used to be called Huda de Estrada. It is one of the main streets here in Porto, Portugal, and one of the main spots of this neighborhood. It is 840 meters long, starts at Carlos Alberto Square, and ends at Rua de Boa Vista. There are a lot of charming establishments along the street with nice housing options, shops, restaurants, cafes, and more. Part of this street is pedestrian only, so it's a great area to walk around in. The buildings aren't too tall in this district, which keeps the old feel. There's a lot of renovation going on to update some of these amazing buildings. Plenty of the streets, whether only for pedestrians or narrow one-ways, have homes with beautiful balconies, hole-in-the-wall restaurants to try, and more. Something to note is that there isn't as much green space in this district. While there are some small squares with some grassy areas, you won't see any bigger parts like some of the other neighborhoods in Porto. Plaza Hipublica is probably your best green space in the Cerro Feita neighborhood. There's a lot of historical significance in this neighborhood as King Dom Pedro actually used to live in this area. Also, Carolina Michaelis, a critic and writer who was the first woman to teach Portuguese at university, also lived in this area. Another Portuguese writer, Agustina Besa Luiz, described this street as the most beautiful in all of Porto. A notable landmark is Church of São Martinho, also known as the Church of Seda Feita, which is a medieval church dating back to the late 9th or early 10th century. Some think it might go back as far as the 6th century and could be the oldest church in Porto. It's hard to know just how old it is, but it's amazing that it's still beautifully preserved. Here are a few other notable landmarks in Seda Feita. This neighborhood is very central and has a lot going on. It's a bit trendier and is great for singles and couples if you want to be close to the center but not right in the tourist buzz. It doesn't really cater to families as much, but if you love food and are a foodie, this is the place to be. Now let's get to five eateries we want to highlight here. This district has a great variety and some really amazing places to try. All right, so first stop right here at Taverna Aduela. 
Tabona Adwella has a great buzz with both indoor and outdoor seating. It always seems to be busy, and they offer some unique foods and very affordable prices. They also have some cool drinks to try as well. That figure jam, see ya. Nicolau Porto is known for their amazing brunch. They also have a nice space both indoors and outdoors. It's a great spot to bring your dog. It's a nice and vibrant place to be. For those of you looking for vegetarian or vegan options, Nicolau is a good place especially for brunch and they have smoothies and some fun drinks to check out. with the French toast, it's really good. To be right in the city can get a bit crazy because of the buzz. You'll be surprised when you enter Selena, walk through to the back, and this large grassy courtyard greets you. There's a bar back there called Easy with a great relaxed vibe, which will shock you to be in the city, but be able to have a drink and relax in this quiet but popular space. Espaso 77 is on a small side street but has good deals for both food and drinks. It's a great place to try some typical Portuguese snacks at a good price. A unique location in this district is Bao's Taiwanese Burger. A Bao is a steamed bun and a very common food in Asia. So here they make some awesome sandwiches with the Bao, along with dishes like noodles, fries, desserts, and more. There is still a lot of older housing in this neighborhood, but you will see renovations happening. This could be a good place to invest in. Earlier we mentioned Carolina Michaela's, which is a metro stop in Porto, but that area is better known to be in the Boa Vista neighborhood, which is different than Serafita. The only metro really in this neighborhood is Lapa. This church is a prominent landmark in Lapa. Igreja de Nossa Senhora de Lapa is a massive church in this district. The construction of the church was started in 1756, but wasn't actually completed until 1863. The inside is exquisite and is known to house the heart of King Pedro IV. The church is a must-see in this neighborhood. Furthermore, there is a cemetery and a hospital related to it and near the church. Because Seda Feita is a bit trendier, you will have some funky street art. Now let's check some of that out now. Now that we've shown you a little bit of the Seto Feita neighborhood, we are going to give our thoughts on what we think of the district and a rating out of five. Let's go, right? Okay, so I think that Seto Feita is a five out of five. I'm gonna give it a five out of five. Wow. For me, yep. I think if if I'm to, to kind of rank the different neighborhoods here in Porto, Portugal, Seto Feita is in my top three. Is it really? It is. So you would live there? Yeah, I would live there. Um, the one tricky thing is there are certain pockets of Seto Feita, or at least the, the outline that we've drawn using a map that we found online, um, that could be a bit too touristy. Our first apartment was in a really touristy area, and granted, there wasn't a lot of tourism at the time, COVID, but it could be a bit overrun with tourists. However, my gosh, like 
Everything that you could want is at your doorstep. The one knock, and we mentioned this in the video already, is the green spaces, so it makes walking the dog a little difficult. Yeah, and it's not as easy with the baby. So for me, I like the district, but the current lifestyle that we have, I would say it's a three out of five for me. What? Yeah, and the reason I say that is because I love the food scene there. It's got amazing food, but it's just not the best for having a baby. Okay, so we haven't talked about this. <laughs> what? A three? Yes. For living there right now, I would give it a three. See, I'm throwing like right now, the stage we're in right now out of the window. Cause oh. we go down to that district quite often and we don't have any issues. No, I mean, we go down there for the foods, the, the drink, the atmosphere, but living there would be a little more difficult because there's not as much green space, it's not as family friendly and it will be a little more touristy and that young trendy crowd. Okay, family friendly in what way? There's just not a lot of family-oriented things to do. It isn't catered to families as opposed to some other neighborhoods who have like more walking streets, who have more playgrounds, like things like that. The parks and the playgrounds, those are a big thing like when you have a little kid. So it's just not as family-friendly. I got you. For young kids. I think if your kids are a little older, then it's not bad. But for the stage that we are right now with Valencia being one, it's a little difficult. Okay, so me just looking in inwardly, personally, Sato Fe, it's a five out of five. I'm not gonna change my rating, but I get what you mean. I, I totally understand right now we're living in, in a different area and we're able to walk to like three, four parks mm -hmm. really easily. And yeah, that would be hard in Santa Fe. Right, so that's why, I mean, I do like the district and I think that it is nice and trendy. And again, the restaurants are amazing. But for right now, I just wouldn't want to live there. I think I would live there if I was single or if it was just the two of us. But with a young kid, I would not live there. And that's why I'm giving it a three out of five. Dang. <laughs> what do you guys think? Since you are interested in neighborhoods of Porto, we've created a playlist right here for you to check out the top seven neighborhoods to live in in Porto, Portugal. Check it out. Hope you guys enjoy. Bye. Bye. Let's get moving.